here at Sonic Common Primary School, we're experimenting by having a project day involving our Year 4 children making learning games for our children in Year 2. So the aim of today really is to experiment doing something new, something that we've never done here before really. And it's to get our children who are older in Year 4 to have a go at making a game for children in Year 2 to help support them with their learning. So there are, there are two different parts to the project really. Our Year 4s are going to be thinking about how they can make an interactive game um, for a real audience. And my Year 2s are hopefully this afternoon going to be using that game to support them with their learning. What do we need to think about when we're doing this? Keep the background simple. Would you want a green background with a green snake? No. 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 Why not? Go on. Because you can't see your snake. The year fours who are building these applications, are building these games, have got a real audience, children younger in the school. And I'm hoping that's going to give them real purpose for learning, that they're not just going to be making something so that they can see it, but they're actually thinking about how they can design something for a specific group of children. So they're going to have to think about things like their audience and how younger children learn and the kind of games that younger children will play. So put your thumbs up if you feel that you're ready to have a go at making a game for children in year two to play. Excellent, off you go. What kind of do you want to do? I'm doing um, in the water kind of. Yeah. Let's see. This half's light blue and that half that dark blue. Yeah. So that dark blue? Done? Yeah. I think that's quite a good colour. Yeah, because we need it a bit bright. We're going to be using an application from Too Simple called Too DIY or Too Do It Yourself. It allows children to create their own games. You can create the pictures, you can create the images. Can I do the eyes? Yeah. You can then export what you've done as a flash file, which allows you to upload it to websites and children can then go and play and use their applications at home. The website's the key platform for these games to be published. It's available to anybody and everybody all over the world. And again, that's given them a purpose for learning. I let them know when we're making these games that they're going to go onto the website. We're not keeping it in the suite, but it's available and it's out and about. This one's got snake on the beat. It's quite a hard I was quite cynical about what my class would really get out of it for themselves. I could definitely see that the children would be engaged and it would be really fun for them, but I wasn't really sure what the learning element for them would be other than very quickly putting together a game, because it's quite a simple programme. I thought it was much, much better than, than I thought it would be. I could absolutely see that there was potential for them to be moving forward, not just in ICT, but their own maths learning, their own English learning, was moving forward at the same time. There was quite a few elements of things they were putting into the game that they weren't really sure of the answers themselves. Ours is about science, and you have conductors and non-conductors. You need to pit them into two groups and um, it come up with a score saying score and then it's a one or two or three or something. Having delved into the games that they could make, I quickly found that there were games that I could use to assess their learning, particularly for science or for, for maths. Games that they would be able to make that would test what they'd learnt at the end of a block and the games that I could then use to assess what other children had learnt at the end of the same block. So thought it was a really useful programme. I think it's a good activity to help Year 2 with their maths because um, when they're um, playing it and they get through the levels, they all improve their maths and think of um, fun things that they can do with maths. We all know that children love playing games and they probably spend far too much time playing games at home as it is. It was interesting for them to move from being game players to game makers. What they were doing is thinking about the kind of games they'd like to play and they were automatically bringing that into the room and they were thinking about the kind of messages you see in games, the kind of sounds you see in games as well. What I found particularly effective about these games was that um, many of the children brought learning from home into their games so they were very aware of what made a good game because they played games at home and they were able to use that for their own learning. And it was interesting to see that it was a completely different set of skills from a different set of children from the children I normally have who bring home learning into the classroom. What, what's this that you're designing here? This is a grass snake, we're going to do a red. This is looking really good boys, carry on, well done. I think the year twos enjoy playing the games. I think it certainly could help with their learning as well. The times tables, the odd and even numbers, they worked well. But it was nice to see the science coming into what they were doing. Now, can you, do you know the three times table? Ah, come back. The year fours were quite interested 
to see the year two children playing their games, but then automatically they started asking for feedback. No, I didn't get it. Um, yeah, I to it was all to do with sharing, sharing ideas, evaluating each other's work, and feedback came naturally. It's impossible, I, I added it too much enemies on it. They started thinking, now that somebody's playing this game, I can see that this is going to be a problem, I can see that this is working well, and this is what I should do to improve my game. This morning has been really successful for children in my class. I feel they've not only done a whole tranche of IT, they've also done lots of cross-curricular learning, they've thought about purpose, they've thought about audience, and of course they've done loads of collaborative work. So all in all, it's been a great morning. I think it was a success because they had fun and they learnt. They all got what the games were trying to make them do, like in the three times table, with the six times tables, because they got it really quickly and they knew what they were trying to get. Oh, I'm lucky. You just, you just missed the six. I think it's so important for teachers to be aware of what children enjoy doing nowadays. If they do enjoy playing games at home, you know, we need to try and exploit that for a learning purpose, and I think we've done that today. I'd like to do some more work with the children in year four because I think that we've only just really scratched the surface of what they could do. I think it would also be a good idea for them to use it within their own learning, within their own topics, to build learning games for each other. A teacher could use a game to assess a child's understanding because certainly the, the science games that we saw and the time games that we saw, children have to have the subject knowledge to be able to make those kind of games. When you start thinking about it as an ICT activity, it was cross-curricular, which is always a good thing. But also it touched on so many different aspects of ICT learning. We were thinking about some simple animation, we were thinking about simple control, um, the presentation of work, being creative using ICT. They were doing art within their, their projects as well. They probably didn't realise when you start to think about it how much they've learnt today. That's the great risk.